Hi, everybody. This is our uh, assignment we did called Moon Data First Look. If you missed class the day we did this, or if, in fact, you were at class and just need a little more help with it, um, first of all, for the people that weren't here, uh, this is some real moon data I collected a few years back. And you can see everything on this is pretty self-explanatory for the, for the data in terms of the time that I saw it and the altitude of the moon and the date and the direction in the sky. The one that you might not recognize is this thing that says S slash M. And notice I have a little degree on some of them, but they don't all have it. Like some of them are missing that. That is the sun-moon angle. And that simply was a time where I went out during the day when both the sun and the moon were visible. And if I take one arm and point it at the sun and the other arm and point it at the moon, the angles that my arms make are the sun-moon angle. So if that sun-moon angle is relatively small, that means the sun and the moon are fairly close to each other in the sky. And if the sun-moon angle is really large, that means that they're fairly far apart in the sky. So that's what that means. And again, not all of these have a sun-moon angle because I did some of these views at night. So our first question wants you to decipher the different moon phases we have. And I'm not going to do that for you, but just to tell you, do not include like these two don't include as two different phases because you can see they look an awful lot alike. And you can also look that I saw them on consecutive nights. The way the moon looks doesn't change a whole lot in one night. So when you're looking for the phase of the moon, try and find them every like, you know, four or five nights apart when they look quite a bit different. So that's the first one. And the same thing when you find out how long it takes a moon phase to repeat, just like look at this one and then go through until you see that one again where we see the left hand side of the moon and look at the date and trying to decipher about how long that is for a moon phase. Um, now, question three says, does the moon's uh, transit across the sky mimic that of the sun's ecliptic and give some examples on here? Well, if we remember the sun's ecliptic, local noon, the sun is always south. And there's a few times in the morning and the evening in the summertime where the summer is in the northern part of the sky, but most of the time it's southish. So that's the key to remember from our shadow plots that most of the time we see the sun is in a southish direction, southeast, southwest, south, that kind of thing. So look at all the directions I've got on the moon and ask yourself if it looks like it's in the same part of the sky. Four. Does the type of moon seem to have any relation to the time of day or night that we can see it? Now, this one can be tricky to pick up. But when I say the type of moon, I want you to look at just the top row here. All of these moons in just the pictures have something that's in common. Okay? And all we're focusing on is the picture. Ask yourself what all of them have in common. And then look at the time that I've took the observation on all of them. Then notice the second row of pictures. In the same way, all of the pictures have something in common, and it's absolutely the opposite thing is the top row. And then look at the time of day that I saw those. So that's the pattern you're looking for on question number four. So when I say type of moon, that's what I mean. Just what do all these in the top row have in common? Again, we're only looking at the picture. What do all of these on the next row have in common? We're only looking at the picture. And of course, on all the moons, the part that's white here or bright, that's the part of the moon we can actually see. We're darkening out the part that we can't see on here. Okay, and then does the sun-moon angle have any relationship with the moon phases? Again, give some specific examples from your data. And for your examples, you can just put the date of your, of your example. But again, if we look at the sun-moon angles right here, the first thing we got to decipher is what makes a big angle and what makes a small angle. And about the smallest sun-moon angle is 40 degrees. So a small sun-moon angle is 40, 50, 60 degrees, okay? A big sun-moon angle, we've got on a couple of them, this one's 120 degrees. We've got some here that are 150, um, uh, and those kind of things. So 150, 160, 170, those are big sun-moon angles. So again, look at the moon that we see at night 
and ask yourself, what can we say about the moon we see always when these angles are small versus what it looks like a little different when those angles are big? That's what you want to focus in on for number five. And then finally, number six, about how long does it take our data to revolve around the moon? That's really almost the exact same thing as one other question, and we'll see if you can figure that out. But the two that always give people trouble are this type of moon during the time of the day and the sun-moon angle. And again, the type of moon you see during the time of the day, ask yourself what all these have in common. Look at the times these first two rows of data really answer that one the best. And then does the sun moon angle have any relation to the moon you see? That kind of is from all of the data here. So just look at our sun moon angles and ask yourself, what do the moons with small angles, 40, 50, 60 degrees, what do they have in common versus the ones that are large angles, you know, 150, 140, that area. And that's it for our moon lesson. If you missed this day, you can find this on the uh, website on the downloads, along, of course, with the worksheet we did today. All right. Happy moon data looking at.